Today we're going to go over one of the most overlooked things in irrigation management, irrigation system performance. If your system's not operating the way that it's designed, all of your irrigation scheduling is for naught. But it doesn't start here, we have to start at the pump with checking our pre and post pressures. Depending on the manufacturer, there's going to be a design pressure loss. So be sure to check your system manufacturer on what that is. We want to then check our filter cleanouts. Be sure to shut them off first, and we're just going to clean these out. So once we've checked our pressures, we want to check our flow meter. This is a good time to take a picture of the flow meter, so then we can come back and record what our flows are over time. One thing that we're not doing today, but we will want to do at the end of the season, is check the sand in our sand media filters. We want to see what the quality of the sand is over time, as well as the amount of sand that is left in the filters. Before we go out in the field, I like to print out a map, and we're just going to draw out 30 to 40 different places evenly distributed across the orchard to take our flows and pressures. Now, be sure to flag and remember where you do this because in years down the road, you're gonna to wanna to come back and test the same spots. Before we start flushing the ends of our lines, we wanna start with flushing our sub main. You wanna just slowly open this valve and you're gonna let it run for somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds. If you see dirt come out, you'll let it run until it clears. So we're just gonna slowly close this off being sure not to close it too fast as we do not want to create a water hammer. So after we've flushed out our sub mains and we've moved down to the end of the orchard, we're going to want to flush out our drip lines about two to three times throughout the season, depending on the quality of our water. Open this up. So at first we're going to see it comes out muddy and there's some grit and it's going to clean out and we're going to want to let it run for a few seconds to make sure that it's clean. We'll close it back off. Now when you flush them, open up no more than 10 at a time because you want to make sure that you have ample pressure and flow to get all of that mud and particulates out of the line. So as we take pressures, we're going to take our hole punch, punch a hole in the line, and then use our pressure gauge with the pitot tube, insert that into the line, and record your pressures onto the map. Then take that out and grab your vice grips with your goof plug in them and insert back into the line. You're going to want to rinse and repeat this about 30 to 40 times throughout the system. So after we check our pressures, then we can take our flows. For drip emitters, we want to capture a total of 60 flows evenly spaced throughout the orchard. Cal Poly San Luis Obispo recommends taking 16 flows at your high pressure, 16 flows at your medium or average pressure, and 28 flows at your lowest pressure area within your orchard. You will then record those flows to determine what your distribution uniformity is across your orchard. After you complete the simple evaluation, if the numbers don't make sense, please be sure to reach out to either your local irrigation professional or your RCD and have them come out and complete a full evaluation to help identify where these issues lie. If you're struggling with creating an irrigation schedule, check out the free irrigation calculator at sustainablealmondgrowing.org.